Okay, guys, um, here is our next page. Most of this is solving, so that's why I wanted to do it all together in one video. Um, so let's start with number 10. It's log base 6 of x equals 2 log base 6 of 8. So the first thing I want to do, this 2 here in the front, I want to move to make it my exponent. So I'm going to have a log base 6 of x equals log base 6 of 8 squared. Now the reason I want to do that is now what I can do is um, do 6 to the on both sides. And our property says that if you have 6 to the log base 6 or anything to the log base same base, that's going to go away, and you're left um, with just the argument. So I have x equals 8 squared, um, which leaves me with x equals 64. Um, really what you're just doing is once you've got the same log base something with nothing in front, their arguments have to be the same in order for their values to be the same. Let's look at number 11. I have log base 8 of something equals 0. I can always rewrite as an exponential, or like as an exponent. So I'm going to rewrite this as 8 to the 0 equals 2x plus 3. Well, we know anything to the 0th power is 1. Okay, I'm going to subtract 3 and divide by 2. Number 12. Um, before I can solve this, I need to have just one um, logarithmic expression on this side and one on this side, and hopefully they'll have the same base. In this case, they will because they're all base e. Um, so let's combine these. I'm adding two um, natural log expressions, which means I can multiply um, their arguments. That's our property. So I'm going to have ln of 7 minus x times 3x plus 5. Now, you don't have to put these braces, but it's a good idea because you really want the whoever's reading your paper to understand that you know that all of this goes inside the argument. Okay, this all equals ln of 24x. Well, we know in order for these expressions to be or have the same value, their arguments have to be the same. So now I can just say that 7 minus x times 3x plus 5 is equal to 24x. So let's start foiling. I'm going to have a minus 3x squared. Um, let's see, so minus 3x squared plus 21x minus 5x plus 35 equals 24x. I'm going to move everything over to this side so that my leading coefficient is positive. So that's going to give me over here a 3x squared. This is 16x, so if I subtract it over, I'm going to be left with an 8x on this side minus 35. Okay, if we factor this, I would love to have taken a 3 out of every term, but that 8 and that 35 aren't going to let me. So let's see if we can think of multi or things that multiply to 35 um, that when multiplied by these will add to 8. I think if we do 3x minus 7 and an x plus 5 minus 35, that's going to be 15x minus 7. Yep, that works. So um, my value, so what makes this 0? Well, 7 thirds is going to make this 0. A negative 5 is going to make this 0, but we have to be careful. I can't put in a negative 5. I can put it in this one because I would get 12, but I can't put a negative 5 in here because I'm going to get a negative value, so I can't use that. So my only answer is this. Number 13. Okay. Um, let's think about this. This one half, or sorry, this 0.5 is really the same as one half. Let's try to give them the same base, okay? So this is the same as 2 squared raised to the x. This is the same as 2 to the negative 1. Okay. So if um, I rewrite this, I'm going to get 2 to the 2x and 2 to the negative x minus 1. In order for these expressions to have the same value, their exponents have to be the same. So now I can say that 2x equals minus x minus 1. I'm going to add x to the side, and I'm left with x equals uh, negative, ooh, sorry, hold up. Yeah, sorry, that's a negative 1, so minus 1 third. Okay. Number 14, it's very similar to 12. We need to start by combining our log expressions. So I'm going to have ln of x plus 10 times x minus 1 is equal to ln of 6x. Um, these will only be the same if their arguments are the same. So I'm going to have an x plus 10 times x minus 1 equals 6x, but I'm going to FOIL while I'm doing that. So I'm going to have an x squared minus 9x minus 10 is equal to 6x. So x squared minus 15x 
Oh, wait, hold up. Minus. Oop, that's a plus 9x. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm going to subtract the 6 over, and I get 3x, so plus 3x. Minus 10 equals 0. I'm going to get an x plus 5 and an x minus 2 when I factor. So my possible x values are negative 5 and 2. Let's see if they work. Negative 5 is okay here. Negative 5 is not okay here. 2 is good. 2 is good. 2 is good. So my only answer is x equals 2. Okay, number 15. Log base 8 of 2 root 2 equals x. So it's saying 8 to the what power is going to give me 2 root 2. Now, um, let's rewrite this really fast. Um, this is the same as the square root of 4, right? 2 is the same as the square root of 4. So this whole thing here is the same as the square root of 8. So what's going to make, to, what, what exponent will do the square root? Well, that's 1 half. Okay. Let's keep moving. For number 16, we're going to expand. So the first thing I'm going to do is say everything that's in the numerator is going to get a plus sign. Everything in the denominator, oopsies, is going to get a minus sign. Okay. Now we're going to deal with the exponents. This is an exponent of 4. Okay. This is an exponent of 1 half. It's the square root. This is an exponent of one third. And that there is our final answer. You guys did a good job with that on the quiz, so it should be okay. This one, okay, everything that has a plus goes in the numerator. Everything that has a minus goes in the denominator. Um, so one another way you can think about this, since they all have a one third, if you want to do this first, you can. That's going to say, okay, I've got ln, I've got something for my numerator, I've got something for my denominator. Okay. This one third says take the cube root. Okay. Now, it might seem silly to have to do this, but I think you'll notice because of these solving problems that being able to condense is actually really important. Being able to expand is going to be more important in things like calculus when you start taking um, derivatives and integrals. So this is why it's something that we need to make sure we can do pretty easily. Because pre-calc is all about getting you ready for next year. Okay. We can use a calculator now. So it says solve the exponential equation, round to three decimal places, show work for credit. So please always make sure you're showing your work. So remember, we said if we take the natural log, it lets us take our exponents down. Um, we actually have a couple ways we can do this one. Um, but we'll just do it with the natural log on both sides first. So if I take the natural log of this side, I'm going to get this. Natural log of this side, I'm going to get this. This is going to be rewritten as negative 3x ln of 2. Okay. We want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide... Um, both sides by negative 3 ln of 2. And we're going to round that to the thousands place. So I'm going to do ln of 107 divided by a negative 3. Now be careful. In their denominator, we want negative 3 ln of 2 all in the denominator. So make sure um, you put that in parentheses. Otherwise, it's going to think you're dividing by negative 3 and then multiplying everything by ln of 2. Okay. So that gives us a value of negative 2.247. Okay. Number 19. Um, let's take the natural log of both sides. The nice thing about taking the natural log of e is um, we have one of our properties. So, LN, so log base e of e is going to go away. So I'm just going to have 4x equals ln of 33. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And if I type that into my calculator, I get approximately 0.874. Okay. Number 20. Let's take the natural log of both sides. 
Now really fast, if this was a non-calculator section, you would just leave your answer like this right here or like this right here. That's totally, totally fine. So don't be stressed out if you don't get a calculator for a problem like this. So this is gonna be x ln of five. I'm gonna have an x plus two ln of three. So let's start by distributing. So I'm gonna have x ln of three plus two ln of three. I want all of my x terms on one side. Sorry, I get back and forth between parentheses and not. I'm not worried if you do or don't for right now. Um, use them, that is. So I'm gonna factor out my x. And then I'm gonna divide both sides um, by this here. And if you type that into your calculator, now remember, when you do this, you wanna make sure the whole denominator is in parentheses. And you're gonna get approximately 4.301. Okay, we got one more on this page. Notice these are both log base three. That means we can combine these expressions. When we're adding two logs of this, we can multiply their arguments, so four times x. I can rewrite this as three to the five equals four x. Okay. Um, three to the five is 243. And I can divide both sides by four. And I get 60.75. Okay, there's a couple ways you can do this. Another way you could do this, let's say this was a much more complicated function. This one was pretty easy to solve by hand. I don't think that's what we meant to do, is you could graph this in y1. You can graph this in y2 and find where they intersect. So if you're ever stuck and you have a calculator, if you have two sides, you can always graph both sides and figure out where they intersect on your calculator. Okay, so that's the end of page two. I'll do a video on page three soon.